Hello and welcome to my garage. Today we're going to be looking at the transmission or gearbox oil system on an MGB. In the first part of the video I'll be looking at how to check the oil level in the gearbox. In my car, which is the early chrome bumper type, this is done using a dipstick that's behind the uh, radio housing. On the later cars, the rubber bumper ones, the whole procedure is done under the car through the filler hole of the gearbox. In the next part of the video, I'll cover how to drain and refill the gearbox. In my car, that's done through the top. On a rubber bumper car, you'll be doing it from the underside. Both procedures are fairly similar. I think it's almost a bit easier on the rubber bumper car because it's easier to check where you are on the level. For refilling the oil, a very useful tool is this, uh, this oil pump. Makes a nice, makes a noise, nice noise when you, uh, when you pull it. You can fill this up with the correct amount of oil and pump it straight into the gearbox. I think trying the job without the tool, is it, it's possible, but it does make it an awful lot harder. The other thing I have done, I've got a bucket of hot water here with my, uh, with my gearbox oil in it. The one I'll be using is the, uh, it's the Castrol Classic 2050, exactly the same as, uh, as the engine oil in most cases. And this, as usual, comes from Opie Oils. But I'll put a link in the, um, in the description below for both this, uh, this sort of pump tool and the, uh, and the oil I'll be using. In terms of how often to change the oil, it does depend a bit on what you're using the car for. For a low mileage car, when you're doing maybe sort of 5,000 miles a year, I'd have thought really between sort of three and four years would be absolutely fine. For a daily drive, you'd expect to change it every sort of two years if you're doing sort of 20,000 miles over that period. In my car, which is sort of competition use, I change it three times a year, usually after every three race weekends. To start off with, let's get inside the car and we'll find the dipstick. Now this only applies to the uh, chrome bumper cars. You should find sort of behind your radio housing, you have a, a rubber bung that looks a bit like this. I imagine it on, a, on a normal car, this, this whole area is gonna be carpeted. So you have to sort of lift the carpet back. And what we're looking for is this, uh, this rubber bung at the back here. And then underneath there, if you sort of reach in, you'll feel, you'll feel a sort of a dipstick that you can then pull out, pull out to check. So let's see what our level is. I think we are, Oh, a bit too, yes, it's, it's a bit hard to see on the on the camera here, but we are we are sitting just where I'd like it. It's, it's literally just on the top of that line, but the oil is so is so clear that you can't uh, you can't really see it. It's useful on this dipstick to put a sort of a zip tie or something on it. It does make it an awful lot easier um, when you want to sort of to to to, uh, to remove if you ha if you have the zip tie there. Um, let me put that back in for now. You sort of just have to feel around until you get it in the uh, there we go until it drops in the hole and then with that you then just this, this rubber cover just uh, what that will do is just sort of sit back on I sort of twist it on a bit there we go and then that's uh, that's where you find the dipstick on the car but as we're as we're going to be draining you let's take this uh, let's take this out again there we go and what I'm going to do now I'm going to get underneath the car and I'll show you I'll show you where the drain plug is and also if you have the uh, the rubber bumper car I'll go through the details on how you drain and refill that here we are so under the car now you'll be able to see the uh, the drain plug if you do have the rubber bumper car you should find your filler plug is it's sort of just just up here somewhere hopefully you'll just be able to see where, where my finger is and that's where you would where you would refill and as always with this with these kind of systems if you are draining it always make sure that you can you can get into refill at first obviously we've just taken the dipstick off inside so now i've got no problems refilling this so let me let me get the camera on the stand and we'll start draining this gearbox down Okay, so we've got our, we've got our drip tray in place just under the, uh, under the gearbox here and it's an 11 16th head, head sort of um, sump plug on this. So let's just gently ease that out. It's always worth having some, uh, some protective glasses on uh, for this and I've also, I think I'm also going to just grab a rubber glove as well. It's not hot oil or anything, but it's just to stop it going through my through my gloves. There we go. Let's loosen this off. There we go. And just let that uh, let that sort of drain out. And you can I don't know if you'll be able to see. You can see on the end of that sump plug, it's a magnetic one, and there is a fair bit of metal on there. I mean this is only done it's only sort of done two races. We'll have a we'll have a good look at the oil in a minute too to sort of see what uh, see what condition it's in. But let's just, let's just leave that to drain down for now. So hopefully you might be able to see here. There's actually a, there is a sort of a fair bit of metal on the end of the uh, on the end of the magnetic plug. I mean, it looks it's all sort of small bits rather than anything sort of anything serious. So I'm going to try and clean 
play most of it off, but it does sort of highlight the um, the importance of changing the oil regularly. I mean, in fairness, the oil is is fairly cheap, certainly compared to the cost of of, of rebuilding gearboxes. So I think it's good to try and uh, try and sort of keep it as clean as, as clean as you possibly can, keep it fresh, so you haven't got little metal metal particles like this going around uh, between the gears. So that's our our oil drain from the car. And you'll be able to see it has quite a sort of a brassy colour to it. I mean this, I mean this oil is probably only about three or four hours of actual you know actual race time on it so it, you know it did look overdue a change as well you can see you can see all the sort of metal particles sort of floating about I'm just going to run a, run a sort of a magnet through and luckily they're all uh, they're all sort of fairly uh, fairly small but they're certainly going around in the oil so it seems like a certainly seems like a good idea to stay on top of uh, on top of changing it so I've cleaned up this uh, this magnetic drain plug as, as best I can. There's still a few tiny little bits left on there, but I don't think there's anything anything to worry about. And what I'm going to do now, this this can uh, this can then go back into the car. So I'm just going to wipe off this last bit of bit of oil. It's just sort of in the uh, in the bottom of the drain there. And then we can put our let's get our plug back in. I don't I don't sort of put any PTFE tape or anything on these. Just give them a sort of a fair squeeze. They're, they're, a, they're a tapered thread, so they usually seal up pretty well. Usually, you know, when you seal oil on these, I think most often it's come from somewhere else on the uh, on the vehicle. So let's just give that a squeeze in, not too much. It's only into aluminium as well, remember. So just, I think that'll do it. And so that's us sort of done for the underside of the car and I'm going to go back into the car to fill it. As we said earlier if you're doing this on the rubber bumper car your filler is going to be uh, it's going to be up under here. Okay so now we've got a hope you'll be able to see I've got my my oil, oil that's been sitting in the warm water that's now ready to go and the the amount I need this is a it's a four synchro non overdrive car which is two and a half litres um, for the overdrive car I think it's like 3.3 litres that we'll need so let's move that out of the way this does tend to be a very messy part of the job, so I've got a few drip trays, I've got a couple of extra cloths inside as well. Obviously if your car is carpeted, some, you know, some cardboard or something to protect it will be a good idea. Now to fill, to fill the, uh, the, the syringe up, I'll just take this, uh, take that, take that cap, the uh, end cover off, that tends to get in the way. Rather than sort of sucking the oil in, what I tend to do is, is to pour, pour it in through the top. So let me, let me get this top off if I can. And then this this sort of system has a one has sort of a valve at the bottom that you can you can close. So I'm going to put the first the first one in, which I think so that's the liters on this side. So if I go to there, which is one and a half liters, let's see how that goes. And just as I said, it is it is a very messy job. Definitely easy with with, with the oil being a bit warm. It will flow. Pull that in. It will flow a lot easier when you're always warm. It's especially difficult if you if you do it in winter. I mean, in the summer it's not quite so bad. Let me just see if I can make that pour a little bit better. Okay, so I think that'll do for our our first go. As soon as you get the top back on, yet. So we are. Well, we're spot on. We're spot on. Uh, one and a half litres there. So let's get this. Uh, let's get this on. Hopefully, I've left myself just enough gap to be able to close close this top top down. There we go. So that's uh, that's now ready to pour. Now one of the one of the main problems with this job is the lack of access that we get, which is why I sort of have to use well. I don't have to use but why I like to use this syringe tool so hopefully I hope you'll just be able to see what I'm doing I'm going to try and sort of pop that you've got to sort of feel around inside and find find that hole and then that should just sit in I'll put the drip tray back underneath uh, just in case and apologies for knocking the camera there as well so let's try and get this first one so that's the front valve is now open and what I'm going to try and do is just push push this in gently obviously you don't want to 
squeeze it in too hard and sort of uh, blow it back over the top of the hole. And as this oil is warm, it is, it, is, it is running down very nicely actually. Just let me put that all the way, all the way in. So that's it, uh, that's it down to the bottom. And I'm just gonna, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to just sort of blow it out to get that last sort of, the last dregs of oil to hopefully go in. So I can see that's just running down there nicely now. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna lift this out quickly and just get that onto a, onto a cloth and out of the car straight away. So I've measured out the second, uh, the, this, is a, this is a single litre to go in. Uh, hopefully, I don't know if I'm gonna be right in the way of the camera or not, but you, hopefully you might get the idea still. Right, so that's gone in. And this, and just as we did before, we're just gonna push, I think that's, uh, that valve's still closed, I think. Yep. Yeah. So we're just gonna push. Push the remainder of this in, and already that's gone a bit stiffer. I, I'm guessing that's because the oil has started to uh, to cool a bit. And I haven't got that open at the bottom. Oh, maybe it was that. Let's just see. Right, so it's definitely a little bit stiffer this time round. I can only put that down to the oil just uh, just cooling off. So let me push this in. And the second time is usually a bit messy because of the sort of the oil and bits in the tube from the first from the first first sort of fill. So let me just try and tilt that up and get all of that or well, as much of that in as we can. Right. And again, let's do let's let that let that all fall in with a bit of luck. And then str straight out and into the drip tray. Okay, so I just got a little bit of a spill to uh, to wipe up. Now let me see if we can get this uh, dipstick in. I'm, I'm apologies if I'm right in the way of the camera here. Let's give that a quick frog up. Give it a quick uh, quick clean first, and then let's see uh, let's see what we've got on there. In. So we have. It's a little bit low, if anything. I'm going to wait just a few minutes there, just to make sure all that oil has gone to the sump. We're about sort of halfway between the uh, the full between the, the the high and the low. I'm sure, it's definitely gone all the way to the bottom, which it has. And so yes, it looks like it. Looks like it might need a little drop more. So we're just going to try a little, a little top up, which I'm hoping is going to, going to finish it off. I'm guessing in the process of sort of uh, emptying out the syringe, some oil got left behind. So I'm just going to put got a fair bit of air mixed in with this as well, but never mind. I think I'll take a look at that, see what it's doing. So let's give this oil a check, see where we've, uh, where we've got to. Oh, I'm very happy with that. We are, I think we're spot on the line for the eight, for the, for the high there. So that's good. I'm going to pop that back in. So it's pushed home. A few little spots on the floor here, but nothing too major. And then we can get this, uh, get this rubber cap back on. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm probably right in the way of the camera, but there we are so that's uh that's all back in i just have a quick look over just where a little, a little bit of oil is uh, uh has spotted down there 
Okay, so with our all level checked, that's the procedure finished. Hopefully this video might prove useful to you if you're thinking about checking or changing the transmission or gearbox fluid on your car anytime soon. I must say, after looking at how, how bad the oil was that came out, I think I might bring mine down to every two race meetings rather than every three that I have been doing previously. As always, with any comments or questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. And please subscribe to my channel to see more videos like these in the future. Many thanks. Bye.